Hey Fritz, thanks for continuing our, our coffee break together. We were just talking about paradoxes of leadership. I was wondering, is, uh, is this really counterintuitive or only counterintuitive when, when I'm in a stress situation? Or is that the same thing? No, I think that's a, that's a, an important distinction. And normally we function pretty good um, mm -hmm. regularly. <laughs> but when under stress, there this um, challenge occurs. There we tend to do stuff that can be in the context of what I'm talking about, like team development, organizational development. There it's, it doesn't come in handy. And this is uh, exactly the kind of things that you do in your, your approach it comes to mind to, to figure out exactly what the tendencies are and to examine yes. whether we can go in a different direction, whether we have to do them, yeah. keep doing the things we've been doing, or is there another option? Yeah. You know, this is with the, the impact of leadership. It's basically a model that helps you facilitate team development. It helps you activate the key the leverages for success. And one of them is that uh, the system, the team can reflect on, on itself together and find stuff that is uh, strengthening them, but also patterns in behavior that are uh, um, limiting good connection, creativity and performance. And when you um, dive into this uh, reflection without any judgment, um, you know, you have the opportunity to heal. Um, these paradoxes, you know, what I told earlier on, um, are helpful to, um, you know, to seduce, to think about leadership and confront it with, uh, with behavior we show when under pressure. For a leader, it can be very interesting because in this way you can learn to look beyond behavior. So what's behind behavior? I mean, like feelings, um, needs, but also tendencies in behavior. And when you understand these uh, uh, features or tendencies, um, you can make use of them and do this in such a fashion that, that you know in what phase, what kind of um, challenges occur. For example, in the first phase of development that we talked about earlier on, um, it's more likely uh, that people don't um, tell what's on their mind because they first want to adapt and see if, if they're accepted. So there you, when you know this, um, you can utilize it by asking some more questions like, how is this to you? And really inviting them, being open. You know, we talked about this before, I guess, like vulnerability precedes trust. So when you as a leader also tell like, guys, I'm, I'm searching a little bit here about how to move forward. And um, um, I would really like to invite you to speak up and uh, tell me what kind of options we're having. So uh, I'm very open to this. And my intention is also that it should be enjoyable to work together. So also on that level, I really want to know what you need. What was the first paradox again? And I forgot my own paradox. <laughs> to get results, you have to let go. Oh, yeah. That's and then the person. second one? To get rid of it, you have to go after it. Yeah. To find the way, you must, get, you must dare to get lost. Yeah. Yeah. To get out, you have to get in. And to move forward, you have to stand still. Yeah. <laughs> So um, with with this uh, in this reactive phase, this uh, like you, you need to get in and uh, to get out. You know, you get out of I don't know, and I should know. No, you you can open up and uh, invite the whole team to participate and uh, use the social intelligence of of the system. One thing that I've heard you say that uh, that I use a lot. Uh, since hearing hearing it from you, there is always a very good reason for behavior. It always makes sense. And this is something um, that, that I'm mentioning now because 
I think so often, especially when we're very reactive, we are judging the behaviors of others and saying those are things we don't want. Let's get rid of it. it seems to be part of the paradoxes then to, to, to go into that and to find out what it's about. Yeah. To see from different perspectives. Yes. To do what's not intuitive. Yeah. Uh, to that that gives us the chance to see things differently. Yes. Does it make sense? Well, it, it does make sense to me. Um, and it reminds me of the function of also operating from that idea, like that every behavior has a pretty good reason why it's there. And it has to do with the interpretation of uh, the individual showing this behavior. From their perspective, it totally makes sense at that moment in that context. So when we operate from this idea, it enhances our ability to accept someone else. So that means that um, um, we are much more likely to be able to connect. And so first pacing and then leading. And then ask, uh, tell me more. So why do you think this is um, the good way to move forward? Or, you know, hey, I, I noticed there's some tension. Uh, is that true? Could you tell me more? I'm sure there's a good reason for this. It is, it is an exact accepting kind of relationship offering and that is um, a first step uh, towards getting to explore deeper mutual understanding and finding a way that's working for for all of us in in this context when it's a, a relationship offer that we're making or we're going into a relationship that means also showing more of myself as well um i just had to think about a, a speech i heard recently uh, from Peter Kaufman, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know a lot of the speech is very good, but part of the part that's here relevant is um, he said something like, and I'm paraphrasing here, but if you want to understand the behavior of someone else, you have to see the world the way they see it. Yeah. And as opposite of that, if you want to change a behavior, you uh, need to change the way people see the world. And yeah. in this context, for me, that would be, uh, I want to see how you see this situation. I want to understand, but I also want to share how I see it. Yeah. So maybe you understand me as well. Is that yes. applicable? Applicable? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's exactly what it's, what it's about. I mean, in this way, you shift from a discussion to a dialogue and a dialogue is really exploring. It's creative and and then something new arises, you know, because together we we influence one another. And when we have the intention to find a way that's working for the both of us, well, that is a definition of, of, of creativity. We sometimes operate from another stance, and that is that um, you have an idea, I don't like it, so I don't like you. So we intermingle this content with the person. And then it becomes very hard to find each other. And that is killing creativity. Now in a team, you need to utilize the social intelligence, especially by with professionals. So the team becomes more than yeah, the sum of its parts. So, and I, I think even in a time like this, where there are so many different opinions that we kind of estrange from one another, and then it becomes very hard to get to the level of mutual understanding, let alone find new creative way for, ways forward. I th I always operate from the idea also with these trainings and with team development, you know, first the human being and then the business. Formulates for me in, in the sense that an organization is not a, a machine. No. The, um, I believe now that you can view your business model possibly as a machine, but an organization is, is, is not one. So if we're talking about be more than the sum of parts, this can only happen because it's a living organism and yes. um, a machine can never be more than, than its parts, yeah. especially, um, you know, in the last century and, and turning you know, all this into to a science, which has given us a lot of advantages. 
Um, I think one of the biggest disadvantages is um, the idea that we can treat organizations and people as, as if they're parts that can be fixed or uh, optimized and, and used as a machine. And we know that, that all we do as humans is uh, accomplished by uh, our abilities to to come together and our, our social abilities yeah. and we're recognizing more and more with modern modern science that uh, it's all about relationships and business is relationships I mean, yes. economics is relationships yeah. um, and then we go to the workplace and then we act like it's not yeah. and it's about the content as you say it's completely the opposite so then yes. we we're at the paradox again. Yes. For that. Exactly. Yes. I see. I see it like this: that this you know, life is about relationships, interactions between cells, and deeper, even. And the notion of uh, an organization as a live, living system is really helping you to see: well, hey, there's an economical interest as it is an economic system but it's also a community of people with their stories connecting to create a, a story together and um, when you operate um, from that perspective you, you we come back to what we started off started off with like when you solely focus on results you look at the metrics you look at the figures but you forget about the the system, the organization, the community. And a healthy community is, uh, is producing uh, better results. And when the community is developing towards the level of also thinking about moral complexity, we can think about, hey, what we produce, do it in such a way that it is healthy to our environment and to ourselves. So that living system idea is not only contained to the organization itself, but also in the relationship with its context. So then uh, social issues become relevant for, uh, for organizations. And that's what I see more and more uh, feasible. That we need to follow up on it much more, but, but there's an interesting ten tendency going on. And I guess fueled a little bit by the cor corona pandemic as well was thinking about the paradoxes that some of them are a little bit stronger to my feeling than others mm -hmm. and I have a feeling that I repeat myself a little bit so in I the paradoxes imagine. yeah okay. it seems to me that all five paradoxes have a common root yeah but look at it maybe in different points yeah. of a star maybe you yes. could say I like that. And, and different aspects. Um, and that at the heart of it is something that's very, very human. Yes. Even though it goes against something we maybe think of cognitively as the right way. Yes. And yes. Um, thank you very much for you too. formulating these and sharing them so that we can look at these different aspects. No, thank you. I'm learning from this because that's true. I never saw it like this. Uh, root and and star shape because that's actually what it is so thank you great thank you i'm looking forward to the next time Me too. <laughs> see you soon see you soon bye <laughs>